$9.25. Anything standing out this week? No, I uh, we worked at Tell yesterday with our ISO uh, strategy. Um, otherwise, it's been relatively quiet. Holding two right now, some more kids over the weekend, just routine stuff. So. Yeah. Young person, well, I mean, 19? Yeah. Through an intersection. Went through an intersection. So, bus number issue. Any wet stops? Yeah, it's yeah, it's obvious what happened that caused the crash. Yeah, it's too bad. So anyway, um, that's really all I've got. Pretty good. Anyone here has something for me? So what are the two in for? Just out of curiosity. Um, <laughs> drunk driving. Uh, fighting with the police. Um, well, that's a no no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get you held. The other one's drug related stuff. <coughs> Driving under the influence. Yeah. So, they won't say well. <laughs> they don't seem to learn. They keep coming back two or three times. So, break up flyers. Seem to be. Yeah. So, anyway. ADD is popular. We'll yeah, that. we've got good um, good feedback on our AEDs. I had a donation of 500 yesterday to the sheriff's office specifically for them. It was a nice citizen came in. Had a few other comments, and and so pretty popular. Yeah, see the need, so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Yep. Give a motion. Yes, we do. Um, Make a motion to approve the sheriff's report for April 2014. Second. Motion by second by Walt to approve the sheriff's report for April. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Falls. Walt. Vote manager. Any motion to approve. And just one final item for you guys. I won't be here next week. I'm gonna go fishing. You'll have to do one without me. Well, I'm sure you, know, you won't even notice I'm gone. So. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if there's anything major, you can send Jeff up. I'll do that. All right. Okay. Okay. Hey, moving on. Here, county engineer update. Morning. Morning, engineer Brown. I don't know. Um, have you guys had a chance? Have they sent the union contract back yet? I've seen a thing. Okay, I sent an email to Renee to find out where that might be at. She says it's in Scarl's hands. The last time I emailed her, she says it's been ratified. <laughs> and so it's a matter of him getting the two documents together and getting them to yeah. us to sign. <coughs> Otherwise, past July 1st, I think it refers to the existing contract, mm -hmm. and we don't retroactive to anything. Okay. Well, the secretary is going to need to know that here within mm -hmm. a month, so we can with the yeah. I just send Renee an email again, so we'll see where. It, I didn't know if you guys had seen it. I just hadn't gotten well, a copy. They don't want to send it back. Why? Why say it? Stay where it's at. No. Sure a lot. We're not going to we're not going to refigure pay in that like we did here five six years ago. Well. I guess the ball's in their court. Right. That's what they want to do. So. That's what basically she said. So. Okay. Um, other than that, we're out maintaining roads, um, cleaning ditches, putting pipe in. I'm um, still working on a, on the report for that stop sign area up there in Balsam. I'm trying to get the crash data information to print out. I want to do an engineer's report on the intersection to, to justify a cost-benefit ratio because those lighted signs aren't cheap. It could be something where uh, I want to find out for sure what the what the process may be if the if the public does want to donate the money for those signs. And the reason I think that might be a good idea is if we don't do an engineer's report on it and then we end up providing the signs, that won't be the only place they get put up and they're about fifteen hundred dollars a sign. And then the maintenance on them. So 
I'm not saying no to it, but I want to do a little bit more investigation. And I was having a hard time last week. Got a different laptop, and I'm trying to download the the CMAT software, which is the crash data for the state, and then trying to get it to print out reports so that I can look at it and present it to you guys when I get it done. So, other than that, we're just trying to maintain. When the guys are on vacations and with all their count time they've got there. We've got the uh, the rock the rock quotes gone out for the the annual road rocking, so we'll be getting that back in a week or two. We've divided the county into four quadrants and have sent it to three suppliers that now operate quarries in the county. I think you gotta do it all or nothing or no each quadrant each quadrant's its own territory. Its own so territory. it could be each quadrant will be a separate bid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically you could have possibly three different yep. suppliers. But it's it it seems to be the, the most fair way to give every local person an opportunity to provide rock for the county. And we stand to get good prices if you make it competitive. And so when would that start? I think we have a late start date of, uh, I want to think that it's, I'd have to look again. I wanted to say it was end of June, but I'm not sure if that was, if it was a late start at date of June 1 and we'll be getting it back this week. I can't remember what date we put on it now. But when somebody else, usually when people bid it out, they get it done fairly quick. So. And other than that, we're still working on those projects, trying to get things pushed through. So once we get uh, caught back up on the outside survey stuff, now that it's slowed down in the rain a little bit, um, Jim can get back in here and get stuff going. So You didn't have to talk to the other board as to when they wanted to meet? I did a couple weeks ago, and they never really said anything. So do uh, you guys have a preference? I need to get some more information put together first <clears throat> before I, they want to meet again. I just, everything's going on. With don't we meet every year to, for your contract? You used to. I don't know if you still want to. We can still have a meeting, but that was we more do for... a long-term contract. Well, it was always a three-year contract, but I know that every year we had a salary bump yep. because of the That's what the average saying. salary, but we're to a point now where we're still below the average, but I think we're fine where we're at for now. And, well, we still should do a yearly. That's fine. Though, right? yep. I mean, I think you guys want to talk about it then. We can do that same, you know, and visit with about the equipment. Yep. I will be gone the 9th through the 16th of June. Fishing? No. <laughs> I wish. 9th through the 16th of June. Yeah. Okay. It's a, Where is it? one of those family vacations that you take once <laughs> ever. Uh, Disney? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, 9th through the what? 16th. 16th. They just bump prices, too. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, the California one. Uh, bump the bump prices. I just go where I'm told to go. <laughs> I did have a call about 320th in Windfall. I went out there, and I know Jim went out there as well. It's, it is pretty ripped up. There's a lot of frost boils in the down center of the road. Three twentieth and Windfall. Is that down on the county line? Yeah, right north of the county line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're starting to show up again. I mean, I thought we were maybe dried out, but the rain kind of. I think the frost is still deep. I think we're, most of the frost is out, but I think we're still seeing some of that come up. Is that? That's. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. yeah. We want to talk to you. Yeah. Speak. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to congratulate you on your staff for being so prompt and matter of fact. Um, it's more than frost boils. Um, the traffic out there is horrendous. Um, and I'm going to go back to an issue again where the Mennonites use tractors with your cleats and or tracks. I have a neighbor, John Ray Paul Nolte that use his bulldozer as a mode of transportation. He uses it as a mode of hauling his plants up to the vegetable barn in Howard County. <coughs> he is not the only one. We have them from north, south, east, or west. And um, 
It's an issue. They're tearing up the road. They refer to that as the church road. And we are English. And we do not abide by your English laws. I've learned to zip it. Mm. Because if not, I don't want to be threatened by um, a Mennonite that lives in uh, Chickasaw County that has shotguns, that has done some work for us. Um, and my husband and I are done. He is not here today because of health issues. He's totally stressed out over this issue. I am not. Um, it it um, is an issue that um, none of you are responsible for. And I do not blame you or your staff or any of the county supervisors here. It's an issue of law and order. And um, they live in a different world, and I'm not perfect. But when I see children coming out of that said driveway um, on an easy entry cart, and I brought this issue before, and um, the child probably was one and a half, two, and there was another one about three years old, and then a young girl. An easy entry cart um, mm -hmm. is a pony cart, a miniature horse cart, meant for one person. There's no child restraints. There's nothing. They can flop off of the road. That's the way it goes. Um, and as one uh, Mennonite told me in Howard County, when a child was run over by a steel wheel tractor, and it was called a buggy accident, um, the gentleman told me, well, don't feel bad for them. The child was dead. She laid out in the yard for four hours before they called any medical, sheriff, or Hauser Funeral Home. And that is John Nolte, senior son, Joseph Nolte. Nothing's done. And I'm, I'm dealing with this every day. Excuse and it's me, very Gloria, hard for me. Is, is your question to the engineer I, having, I am. having to do with the road? That is the correct. Repair. That is correct. And Rich, your response would be? We do what we can to maintain the roads okay. and fix them, but I can't do anything about the sure. laws, about the and buggies. And Jim directed, but I want you all to be aware of the hazards out there. I think we are, and I think we all, and this board has. And I'm, I'm going to take the next step. <clears throat> I am. Okay. And if I have to do it as a civilian and stand alone, I will stand mm -hmm. alone. My attorney is unable to be here today, but as MacArthur, I shall return. Okay. As far as any maintenance issues, though, I would appreciate you letting us know if there I are sure maintenance will. issues because we try to stay on top of them before they get bad. Okay. I understand that in certain locations, frost boils with traffic can get worse. We just want to know about them. We can't be on every road every day. But if you do sense that the, the frost boils are getting bad, or anything else, okay. please let us know in the department. And I, and I will not call the Sheriff's Department because they are probably more tech savvy than anyone in this room. Um, they listen to the two-band radio. They know where you are. They move around. As one lady told me, well, I hope the church doesn't move us again. And I'm thinking, oh, good grief, Charlie Brown. And that's the way it is. So I will work with you guys. Well, we just need to know that. I mean, ours, ours, right. from our right. end of it's the surface of the road and maintaining the surface of the road to make sure it's passable. As but far I mean, as as far as the laws of right. of the of the protruding lugs and everything else, I can't enforce that. Right. Um, it's kind of just like when Chuck Nab tries to force force me off the road. I mean, there's nothing that can be done about that either. It's a civil matter, and I'm going to have to go forward, and I am. But I appreciate all your cooperation. I appreciate your honesty, and I will work with you. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Has anybody checked our test frost boils for? I drive one quite frequently, and I think the location where we're at it it seemed to have worked. If we need to find more locations to do that, I think it might be something to do. They haven't been. <clears throat> it's a secret. 
we're not okay. sharing it with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go look at some of the, some of the other ones as well, where we had tiled down the middle too. We'll sell the idea. Because well, it wasn't ours to begin with. But, no, I know. Um, no, what we did Shannon, was in some locations where we. Had Stan, do you remember the individual that that brought that up? Oh yeah, Ed Jordan. Spoils. Yeah, Eddie Jordan. Eddie Jordan down through the hard pan. Didn't they fill up full of baseballs or something? Filled it full of, I think it was inch and a half clean or inch clean rock. Right. So gave the water, a, gave the water a place to go instead of right. up and out. Found a hole and relieved it. I think relieved some of the pressures there. The frost boils, while there's a lot of them out there, they haven't been the wet, really. Some of them have been wet, but they haven't been the puddles splash all over mud where you stick a lath down to four feet and you still don't find a bottom. I haven't seen any like that yet, but I think with all the rain we had this spring, that helped ease the pain a little bit. But it does appear that some of the locations we treated with the, the holes, and I'm going to check some more of them, seem to have relieved some of the stresses on the road as, in, in that situation. So over the years, I think then we tried, we've tried tiling. You know, there's we've places tried. where I know that it's been tiled and, and uh, there's still evidence of some frost boils, not near as bad as they were before they were tiled, but, right. but you know, the way the roads were built, it was, the ditch was pulled back in, made a road, and you're stuck with what was there, and you know, you're going to get pockets of clay, you're going to get pockets of black dirt, just how they built the roads back when they were built. Well, last Sunday I was privileged to be able to go over to Howard County and it's amazing how those roads are, I mean, the frost boils are ten times worse than what we have been. Uh, and I don't have an answer for you why. Well, I, Soil I really thing. just wonder, I mean, there were some of those roads I almost saw as in Minnesota, I mean, there were some there. <laughs> That's crazy stuff. I don't know if it's. I can't answer it. Some of that stuff is just strange how it all how it all works. But some days we get them bad, and others don't. But again, at some point in time, I mean, they're going to have to be able to get some tax money too. Again, I mean, uh, embargo bridges and so on and so forth. I mean, it was hard to try to get around with a fertilizer truck yeah. over. <laughs> He's, they're facing. They're facing a lot of trouble too. Well, every yeah. county is. Else for the engineer. All right. We even get you for 9:45, but we don't take more than half an hour. Go right now. Oh, you want to be part of the circus way? That's fine. No, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. I mean, everything else we got is. So <clears throat> just running you through the cover letter there that went to Joel. Um, this is an old general illustration. We don't know until June 30th. So if you get rid of some property and property and get rid of equipment or cars, that will be reflected on the June bill. Um, the Board of Hartman Board approved uh, premium credit again this year. And Mitchell County's premium credit is 28574 just close to where you were last year. <coughs> and that is calculated on premiums paid in and an out of claims paid out. And then with your special acceptances, Chickasaw Mitchell Case Management, your early child in Iowa, <coughs> and Fancy Solid Ways, and 911, the premium credits for them total 3760 Any questions on premium credits? So that next sheet there, it just takes you through what we're expecting uh, to be on your June renewal. But we're going to go through a few of them that we know we're going to change. Now your property insurance is up about 21%, and that's because some values have gone up. But I also noticed when I looked at this, the old courthouse is still on there. We had $250,000 in case it got hit by a tornado, so we'd have demolition expenses. That's got to come off. 
So we'll take that off and we'll see your property value drop some. Uh, in the marine, your values are down just a little bit. So you see you've got a decrease there. And just as an aside, uh, none of the rates have increased except for workers' compensation. The changes that we're looking at are all exposure changes. Oil and machinery is up a little bit. That has to do with your property coverage, but that will come down as we adjust the mm -hmm. courthouse out of there. Your errors and emissions, that's based on your head count. Last year we showed you 113 employees. This year we showed you have 117. And that doesn't include your temporary raise or your summer help. That should be reflected above payroll in March, where typically people's numbers are low. So if you think possibly that that number is not correct, we can do that change as well. And I think that um, we're going to put the numbers together. Law enforcement looks like we're exactly the same, 26 there, and that includes your sheriff, your deputies, dispatchers, jailers, if you have a dog. Reserves are counted as half a body, so if you get a renewal that shows 26 and a half people, that's because the reserves are all counted as half. Uh, your general liability, that's the one we want to spend some time on. You can see that we were looking at, we were looking at it, we really have to increase. That's based on your expenditures. But after talking to Joel, it would appear that we've got some debt service in there and we've got some pass-through money, um, so we want to get that taken out. So I'll stop and talk to Bart before we leave, and then once I talk to her or take this back to my office, I will give you a, a, a different projection. But I think that it looks like we might be closer to pretty much flat on that rather than that kind of renewal. Auto liability, you're up just a little bit. <coughs> They had some of the cars. You were at 70 cars last year. You have 74 vehicles this year. But it only in the car was to that year. What we're looking at. Now, I also looked at, because your physical damage took a pretty good jump, <coughs> and I went through the last two years. Two years ago, you were at $3,000. And then last year, we had some late changes. And so we were able to give you some credits after the 1st of July. So that's why. I think you got rid of some cars after the 1st of July, so we um, credited that back, and then you got some newer vehicles later on in the year, and Heartland doesn't charge you when you add new vehicles during the year. Your premium is based upon where you are July 1st. Unless, of course, you were, and I think that's what happened if you were getting rid of some cars like July 5th or something, and so we wanted to make sure we got those off of there, so that's why there's a little discrepancy there. Your crime is the same. That's not employee fidelity. That would be if there's cash in the treasurer's office and somebody came in and stole it. That's what that coverage is. The workers' compensation, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on that in just a minute because you're looking at a pretty good increase there. Um, if you go down way to the bottom of the bottom line there, or we're showing your modification factor, you've jumped up 20% in your modification factor. And we'll talk a little bit about so that's really your biggest non-controllable jump. Your premium for additional limits, that's going to change once, because that, a lot of that is based on your expenditures, that's going to come down once we reduce the general liability. So I think when we get the general liability fixed, you're going to see some, a, a whole different picture for your renewal. Uh, your special vehicle equipment, that's the coverage for the cameras and computers, everything in the um, rescue vehicles. And then your cyber coverage is a new coverage this year. And in your packet, there is a sheet. I'm going to get myself on. Looks just like this. Here's the sheet that talks about the new cyber coverage. Looks like this. Uh, the board ended at November 1st, and Heartland paid for all of the premium for the 13-14 year. As of July 1st, uh, Heartland pays half the premium, and the <coughs> county pays half the premium. But it's a coverage we've been looking at for well, at least a year, and going back and forth on it. But Heartland's coverage is fairly silent when it comes to cyber liability. In fact, if we looked at it, the way the coverage is written, was written, you might have had defense coverage, but you wouldn't have had any coverage for any kind of mitigation, any damages to people that had been hurt. So if the credit card was on your system or social security number was on your system and a hacker came and took that, we didn't really have coverage for that. So that is no coverage. It has a $25,000 deductible 
department would pay half the deductible and the county would pay the other half. But as soon as an, there's an incident, the people who claim this coverage send their folks in, um, they'll send assistance people in to again try and mitigate the damages, they send public relations people in on how to contact everybody that's affected and contacting the press and making sure that everything's that we're working to get it fixed. So I do think it's a really valuable coverage and for that amount of premium that you certainly couldn't buy that. That's kind of really quickly the, the comparison on the numbers that are going to be corrected in most cases. So the next sheet here is the calculation sheet that we look at to figure your expenditures. So where I'm expecting we're going to see the biggest change is that um, your gross expenditures is probably going to come down quite a bit once we once we deduct those numbers we were talking about, which would be passed through debt service, that kind of thing. So we should see that come down. But if, without that, you can see where we get the change. Your gross budget went up, and then your capital improvements budget went way down. So that was your biggest change. But once we move that money out of the gross, then we'll see that decrease. Now your next three attached the handouts there are your actual schedules. And you, you send those out in March to your folks and then they tear them apart and send them to each department so they have a chance to look at their number of vehicles or their number of equipment. Um, and again, the biggest thing we want to take off here is the courthouse because it's totally down so we don't need the demolition coverage anymore. But we'll get that out of there. Do you remember what the date was that it was finally down? February. I'm February now. Okay, because what we'll want to do is There'll be a little bit of return premium too. So if I use two one, we should be okay. And we'll work on that return premium for you. Any questions about that? No, I don't. And again, you've got time to look at schedules because we won't build until June 30th. So we'll do any corrections we need to make. And if for some reason we found something after July 1 history of correcting things actually. As an owner of the pool, we approve, so we'll take care of that. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is your workers' compensation, unless you want to spend more time on the And that sheet that we're looking at looks like this. It's your payroll sheet. Now, this is the estimated payroll that we get from your folks. And then we run it against um, the classifications that you have. <coughs> and the rates that we use are the state rates. So those are the only rates that change really from year to year because everyone uses the state rates. It's like this. Yeah, I'm not trained at this. Oh, there we go. I really need to do these in color so I can say, oh, the blue one. Okay, so we look at stuff together with the other. I'm sorry. So we look at your estimated payroll, then with the rates are the state rates, and the estimated premium then is the payroll divided by hundred times the rate, and we get the estimated premium. So if we look at this, your gross <coughs> annual premium is estimated to be one hundred and seventy-two thousand seven thirty-three. And again, I say estimated because we do audit these, so we'll be auditing the thirteen fourteen year at the end of July. Your money factor is a 1.01, .01, mm -hmm. and we'll walk through that in a minute. So that takes your premium up a little bit. So your total standard premium is 174. Then we run it through the Heartland discounts, and you can see there's three different discounts there. And so then your net premium comes down to 122. So you started at 174, and you're down to 122. Now for Mitchell County, this 1.01 .01 is a, I mean, that's a tough one because you guys are typically 0 0.74, 0 0.78, mm -hmm. but we we had an accident that um, has bumped that up. Right. So then the last thing we'll go through is your actual modification factor discussion, and then start, let me get that has the whole sheet on. So you have the cover sheet there, and this is put to, when I put all the statistics in. This is a, a ModMaster software, so. It doesn't give me a lot of, like, as we look through this, you'll see companies and competitors, and I know it doesn't apply to you, 
but it doesn't allow me to change the narrative, which is one of my big complaints with it, because otherwise it didn't say companies and competitors. So how we figure your workers' compensation modification factor is we put your audit premium in or your audit payroll in by payroll classification. And then this Mindmaster software comes back and says, well, here's what we expect your losses to be for that amount of payroll, for that, for each classification. So the only years right now we're looking in are 10, 11, 11, 12, and 12, 13. Because 13, 14 isn't done yet, that doesn't figure into your calculation. So it's just those three years. And then along with your payroll on the right-hand side, you can see where your losses are. You've got small losses that we're able to aggregate together, and then the larger losses we're not able to aggregate those together. Then on page two there, um, right at the top, it's showing you the 12-13 year. You can see that la that large loss there, 549. That's what's really driving. And that's what's really driving your market. Right here. Last page. It says 549. Oh, I was talking about that so that one, that one's driving it. And we run that through again, the entire calculation, and this is a software done by Modmaster. That's what gives us the one point. So a lot of people strive to be at one because they say that's average. For Mitchell County, you, this is since I've been around for 14 years, this is the highest you've been. But, you know, things happen sometimes. And, and it's not a pattern with Mitchell County, it's, it's that easy. Yeah, when it was timing was everything. Yeah. yeah. So on page three is just a little bit of a narrative there. It tells you your expected losses. Your expected losses for the time that we're looking at is around 203000 Your actual losses were 591 uh, But because that one is so large, they kind of factor that out. So if you would have had 591000 of a lot of families of losses, your mind factor would be much different. It would be a lot. Okay, so then the next sheet gives you the little pictures, which kind of help. So here you are with your greens. Again, average, one being an average. Your minimum mod is a 0.68, meaning that you could have no losses, and you're still going to have to pay something in, because there is an expectation you will have losses. So that's that graph. And then the next graph, you know, for so long you've done so well, your green boxes have been smaller than those golden ones. And that's why you have never had a 0.74 for a really long time. And unfortunately, we're stuck with this year for two more years. Because it just passes down. Now, there are still subrogation potential on that, but you're going to have to see how that goes out. Well, on the subrogation potential, would that change then this mod factor? Well, what um, that loss, 253 of it actually go into it. So subrogation, we would have to get to the point where it took it below that 253. Unfortunately, with workers' comp and subrogation, you're probably not going to get a dollar for dollar back. But there's potential to get some. And then that uh, last sheet there, Again, on the premium savings, your controllable mod, you, there's about 33% you know, between 0.68, which is your minimum mod, is where you are now. And I think, again, what's hard about this is you've been down for so long, it's just hard to see this. We've got other counties that have just been doing handstands, and I walked in and said, oh, your new mod is a one But it's not a culture with you, it's you not know, a pattern. So I don't really want to share any names on your larger process, um, just because of the type of health information in there. So um, you can just, I would say shred that because it is, it is confidential because it's got medical information in there.
that whole discussion that unfortunately was so frustrating with workers' compensation segregation. <coughs> his attorney gets a piece of what they recover, which doesn't seem fair. So that's why we see a reduction, why we're not going to see a dollar for dollar. And there's some questions on the driver, what kind of limits that they have. Not really high, I understand. But I mean, even though they had low limits. Is it, it could be are, are we able to go after them personally <coughs> above and beyond their insurance? I think they're now LLC. Pardon? I think they're now LLC. Right. No, but I mean, even though they're an LLC, I mean, they, 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 there has to be some assets in the LLC. And, right, but then wouldn't, wouldn't that be a civil action? Well, but, that's. That's kind of, it, 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 works kind of, it works really strange, and so unfortunately, we have to follow behind on the separation. It's not like Yon needs to take the you know, go by the horn and the car. We have to follow his attorney. Now, we all come to the table, and you know, you'd be a part of that conversation on how we negotiate to get this whole thing settled. I mean, he's a nice woman, and I think he's working part time for a farmer. Um, we've had some other valuations done, and those have come out pretty well. So, you know, this thing should move here pretty soon. So we just keep an eye on it, and then um, it's just frustrating that we don't really get to take charge, and then we have to sure. toggle along behind. But um, it's being watched. So, well, Hartley appreciates your business. Uh, you are a part owner of Harvey, and we make sure we're taking good care of you. And if you have any problems, whether it's a service issue or anything, let us know we want to get the claims. I think claims wise, people are really happy with our new claims people. Uh, we like to get lost in the lobby a little bit more than we've been out. But anyway, just really appreciate the visit. So, do we have a motion to approve signing the <coughs> renewal? So, Second. Motion by Paula, second by Juan to allow the chair to sign the renewal to Hartland Risk Insurance Control. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. So I'll take a roll call. Paula, Juan, both on your eye motions approved. So I'm the client, right? Yes. And then sometime between now and July, you can put on your agenda for your risk pool agreement.
writing this certificate. That was the one we kind of talked about last week. That would add Mr. Cummings' name to the list of... Can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, you surely may. There's no sheet to actually sign on sheet. We're just supposed to sign Just sign that. And, and do we put like approved behind it or something or, or just... Because, I mean, okay. before it was always approved, disapproved. I mean, yeah, I'll just put your name and we'll put approved. Okay. And that's, this is just for the skilled Iowa that we're going to encourage people to use that as part of their hiring practice. So. Yes, that and right, and then we're one of those that we will encourage folks that apply to the county to also take in that core time. I think they should really start doing that in high school, let people take that as they leave. You know, just by looking at those sample questions, I'm thinking, oh my gosh. But anyway. Part of their career assessment or something. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the chair to sign the agreement with Skilled Island. Okay, second. Okay, motion and a second. Uh, the chair to sign the Skilled Iowa to allow Mitchell County's name to be in the public awareness effort. Any further discussion? Hearing none, pause. Aye. Walk. Aye. Walk by under eye. Motions approved. Item 13, approve placing $1,694 in the Land Acquisition and Capital Improvement Fund. Prairie Burns. <coughs> Seven or one. Six different individuals. Okay. These are all folks that don't even mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion by walk, second by Paulus to allow the placement of one thousand six hundred and ninety four dollars in the land acquisition capital improvement fund. Any further discussion? None. Walk. Aye. Pause. Aye. Both on your right. Motions approved. Meetings attended. We have county conservation, and uh, <coughs> basically the major item there was again that they took in a fairly decent hunk of change there, and uh, doing some of those burnings and that they actually. Uh, uh, had more requests, but they felt they ran out of time for. Uh, so they'll try to do some this fall again, and, and uh, those control burns. And, uh, other than that, what I think seemed to be going fairly well. They had some issues with uh, uh, their geo system, uh, and uh, uh, basically. Uh, uh, their boiler and that has having some problems, and, and uh, Adams come out and explained exactly why uh, Adams' bid was twice as high. And Owen said when they went through everything, and that it made sense, and so uh, uh, they voted to go ahead and have Adams redo the whole uh, geo system because they had some uh, water that wasn't being treated. And, that was yeah. part of the problem. Talking to one of those his workers out there, that got such a is it iron that they have magnesium or something that something yeah causes to <coughs> plug the system or something like that. Yeah, of course uh, they have some of the same issues that uh, we do where I live, but uh, uh, again the iron or whatever kind of gives a uh, smell to yep. it, and so they're going to also try to get that out of there and, and uh, to where the water's. Uh, you feel better in drinking it as opposed to. <laughs> it's safe to drink, but yeah. When you snip it, you wonder. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun to drink, it's safe to drink, yeah. yeah. So that was my opinion. Um, I attended the Board of Health meeting, and that just normal actions. We did have um, the sanitarian came in, and one of the things um, we did authorize him to sign site of or origin of production for Valent. Um, some of the smaller countries that they ship their products to don't necessarily, aren't necessarily with the EPA, 
the more concerned with the county of Orange and signing off that it was produced in, in Jose Iowa, or Mitchell County, Iowa. And um, in North Chicago, Illinois, Arabit was paying $75 per signature for their person to sign that. So we're going to go with the same number. And there's about 100 times you'll have to sign by year. So we're going to about $75. Great. Yes. Good for us. So and we authorized Mark to sign that and to set up a code for revenues to have that deposited. So, so we'll have more revenues for home health. Um, we're not sure we talked about we could even use some of for ADs if we wanted to. Yeah, we'll very quickly. I'm sure that's $75 going to be enough. Per signature? I know. I'm like, well, maybe we should raise it. But. Well, I mean, after 50, you should jump up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually discounts after yeah. so many. Oh, that, that works. We thought we'd just stick with the North Chicago rate. Your hand gets tired. Yeah. So the main, the only expense is going to be maybe he'll buy some pens and maybe a little mileage because he has to go down there and sign the forms. But um, I did have an FMC early childhood Iowa meeting last night. Um, working on a three-year accreditation again. That's coming up this summer. So we talked about having some extra meetings to get paperwork done. We are looking to replace a human services representative on the board. Um, has, we preferably a male because we have a lot of females on our board. So if anyone knows anyone <coughs> that would be interested in serving. Yeah. Okay. I got two. I had knew two males in the human services. One couldn't. He said he'll be interested later. The other one hasn't <coughs> responded yet. So other than that, it was good meeting. Um, our assessments are looking good. And, all the programs are getting all their bills in because if we don't spend our money down under 20% of our receipts, we have to pay back or get dinged <coughs> as much money. And last year they got dinged quite a bit, I guess. So this year they're really getting the providers to do their billing on time so that they don't, that they stay underneath the minimum. So we get all of our money from the state. So now it's my turn. And then I'm picking, we're picking up the Russians on Friday. And they'll be here next week. Did I see one? Wasn't yeah, we're down to three now. So one of them did not get a visa. One had decided not to come, and then the fourth one was not granted a visa by the government. So. Okay, my meetings uh, at the FMC landfill meeting last Tuesday evening. Um, we approved running six acres of highly erodible land. It's flat land, but it has a tendency to take the Cut down the water from the old cell and cut a groove in row crop. We thought, well, maybe it's time that we just put it into permanent hay ground and we are going to let that out on a four year contract. You know, take them the first year, they'll probably have to plant oats or whatever to get the grass, the hay ground to take, and then they'll have it for the next three years to take the hay off of it. Um, we also approved getting uh, approved the new contract with our auditor, Murphy and Smith again. Three bids on that. Um, from there, the next day went down to Heartland, and what we basically did is went through the same renewal that Judy just went through us. Yes, and, and then from the Heartland meeting, I went to Prairie Ridge. Um, that was. Just pretty much the same type of meeting we talked about where Prairie Ridge sits with the Affordable Care Act, what our, the plan should be going forward. Uh, there are some developments coming up, but nothing set in stone yet. So that was that meeting. Um, and yesterday I met Lowell and Barb and Brenda. We had the interview with uh, Standard Poor's. And we should be getting that rating. When did you say? Oh, back Friday was it? This week? Well, it was next week. Next, next week. week. Next yeah, well, yeah, and Jeff was there too. Yeah. <clears throat> that was my means. So, um, your management updates? You know, five of them. Of, uh, Barash Farms, Junction North, and Section 23 of Wayne Township. Burnett Tip Four Nursery Unit, Section 23 of Otrano. Erickson Tip 8 South Farm, South Litter, Section 24 of Wayne. We have uh, Relo 1, Section 17 of Osage. 
and reload three of section 36 of Burrow. Okay, I don't see it's advertising for items not being used and in storage from the courthouse. <coughs> that was me. I don't. <coughs> Well, the only thing I can say on, on that is I would like us to just hold off because maybe possibly some of those items may get reused, you know, and then we can have that. And in the end, you know, if they're, they're not going anywhere, I mean, they'll be. Um, I did have a comment from the architects that possibly maybe use those folders, those pews, have somebody cut them down or, or however you want to do and join them together and use them as benches in the courthouse for people to possibly sit. You know, you aren't going to want to sit long on because they're hard to sit on, but, <clears throat> but you know, maybe outside the courtroom or in the lobby downstairs or... Outside the turf outside. where they have to yeah. do their license. And things yeah. Anyway, that was one of the comments and I said, you know, all that could be up in here. So. If that's agreeable with the board, you know, maybe we should just hold off. And yeah. yeah, we don't need the storage. It doesn't now. hurt to do it maybe in inventory, but I think it's everywhere. It's in the annex, it's in the trailer, it's in O'Brien moving in storage, it's you know, in the jail. So, anyway. Other than that, okay, it is 9 30. This is Time for the public hearing on the purpose of instituting proceedings and taking action on the proposal to enter into a loan agreement and to borrow money in the principal amount not to exceed $8,776,350 for the purpose of paying costs of undertaking an urban renewal project in the Mitchell County urban renewal area consisting of constructing and equipping, equipping whatever, you know what I mean, <laughs> courthouse. Um, this being the time and place for this action, um, Mr. Auditor, have you received any petition? I have not received a petition. Supervisors, have you received any oral or written comments? I have received written comments. Uh, comment regarding the geo bonds for the Mitchell County Courthouse. The current plans are for a courthouse that looks backward, both in style and in function, to the previous century. Need for space will decrease, not increase in the 21st century. Already license plates, driver's license, and taxes can be paid online. All the records of the courthouse can be stored in a device that can be held in your hand. There is also this possibility that the number of courthouses will reduce in the future. As a northern tier county, Mitchell County is not a likely candidate for consolidation of courthouse functions. In an email sent out by Joel, he referred to the Dickinson County Courthouse. The plan started at $8 million and ended at $14 million, but the final plan received at least 60% support. The supervisors did not return with the same plan multiple times. They changed the plans. It was also for more than just a courthouse. It was the sheriff's office, jail, and the county services. Dickinson County also has 6,000 more residents in Mitchell County. I urge the Board of Supervisors to not go not going forward with the present plans. Come back with plans that are less expensive and with a design more appropriate for the 21st century. Thank you for reading my comments. Penny Morse. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, the public uh, that I have visited with, uh, every last one of them expressed an interest that we go forward with the project. I had the same experience also. I know last Wednesday I had phone never quit ringing all day long for folks, you know, and, you know, I guess I, I had never seen a petition, but I understand one was being circulated and all these folks were calling me to tell them, me that they were not about to sign the petition and that they wanted the county to go forward. Um, because just the delaying it again will <coughs> add costs. We can't redesign a courthouse now that cost a half a million dollars. That would add another half a million dollars, I suppose, to the cost of redesigning the courthouse. <clears throat> so we had two need studies done. They both came in within feet of each other. Um, it's just, it doesn't make sense to go backwards. It makes sense to go forward, in my opinion. 
There are no other comments from this board or the auditor. Uh, oh, I have one from the former Osage uh, resident who lives out in Connecticut now, and the uh, comment was, uh, says, uh, Mitchell County and Osage, uh, uh, they want to have, need to have good hospitals, health care, another is infrastructure, and he said government buildings are also part of that infrastructure. So if we want to keep <coughs> moving forward, that, that is important. Chair, I just received another comment to read. Uh, regarding Mitchell County Courthouse hearing, Mitchell County Supervisors, I am one of the many Mitchell County residents that does not appreciate moving forward with spending over $8 million for a new courthouse. Funding the courthouse never received the 60% vote of the people, yet the Board of Supervisors continues to disregard its constituents, seeks no compromise concerning the building, and failed to bring us along that these particular plans are a good fit for Mitchell County. Today's meeting is to fund this project with general obligation funds, with the obligation being funded with property taxes. It is my understanding the board is also positioned today to continue to seek no compromise and move forward with funding the $8 million with revenue bonds at a higher interest rate due to more, due to more risk, which are funded by revenue from the project and not property taxes. Considering the courthouse is an administrative building, please explain your logic for generating revenue to pay for, a revenue, for the revenue bonds. Um, I carried a petition in Riceville last week with the intent of the Board of Supervisors to not issue the general obligation bonds, giving the good citizens of Mitchell County a chance to vote on an alternative that would be voted on and accepted by 60% of the voters. After receiving an additional information that the Board planned to move forward with issue in the revenue bonds with the higher interest rate, I discontinued my efforts. My current concern was the effort by the petitioners would be twisted into costing the county more money which happened with the friends of the courthouse concerning previous efforts to seek alterations. In carrying the petition, I found that signatures came easy, and I had the opportunity to hear some of the common themes and concerns which I want to share. Our democratic rights to a vote on a plan that receives 60% majority has been violated. The cost of the new courthouse exceeds its future needs due to more and more transactions being done remotely and online. There are discussions that Iowa County courthouses will be consolidated. There are no guarantees that Mitchell County Courthouse will survive the cut. Many are satisfied with the current building and see no reason that the current facility could not be continued to be used. In summary, above all, the opinions of the good citizens of Mitchell need to be heard and respected and deserve an explanation of the decision-making process that was brought the Board of Supervisors to this point. Sincerely, Rita, Rita Dvorak. Okay. At this point in time, we'll open the meeting to the public to hear comments. For or against. <coughs> this is the public's time to speak if they'd like to. Dave. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree with a lot that's been said about the courthouse and the size and everything. And I don't know exactly what's needed. I agree with a lot that's been said in the, in the letters. Uh, but I mostly agree with what was said in the paper last week in the letter <clears throat> about we need to get things straight. I think there's been a lot of misfacts given. I think a lot of people, in fact, my name got a <clears throat> put on a few things that I said or why I said them that was not right, and I don't appreciate that. And so, I, but I think it's time to move on and try to, if you're going to move forward with it, then people are going to have to accept it and move forward. I, I don't like some of the design. I don't like the way things have taken place. But it's time to do whatever we're going to do. So, but I especially don't like my name be put on something when the facts aren't right. I have never changed my position when I said it was up to the voters of Mitchell County to make the decision. But the old courthouse is already gone. We can't change that. So now it's case if we're going to move on with this design, if you did enough study and you feel it's the right design, then that's maybe where we go. Uh, I really just like it being turned to the west, but that's all. I just wanted to say that it's time to quit giving bad facts. It's just like we read all the facts about the Dickinson County Courthouse. Facts were given to make it sound one way when that wasn't true. In the same way with what my name has been put to, I have never changed and I had an article in the paper stating how I felt. It was up to the Mitchell County people to decide, the majority rules.
and that went by the wayside. Okay. Anybody else? I have additional comments. Um, I'm one of the people that submitted the letter. State and your name for My name is Rita DeVore. Okay. And um, it is important about the moving forward piece, and, and I think we share that, there, that feeling of more information. I mean, normally when you have this big of a project, you need to sell it. You need to get buy-in from the people to have a better understanding of what its purpose is, what the focus is, and the functionality. And in particular, I mean, you know, as people talk, you know, and I don't know if you are answering questions about the design today, but it does seem unusual that we would need that big a lobby. You know, that has been one point that has been brought up several times, and I don't think it's been addressed. And I think there's probably some other design issues. And um, again, if you guys, if if we could get clarity on what the functionality is of an over a thousand square feet lobby, that would help mend the fences that need to be fences concerning this courthouse. Another point is, for clarity, is do you intend to rent out space? I mean, it seemed to be a big building, so there was a question, is there rentable space? Or is, is, that, is that one of the reasons it has the size it has? How much, you know, how much energy efficiency have you engaged in this project? All of those types of things, interacting with the public to get a better understanding would help move this project forward. How many in this room were at the advisory committee meetings? And, and I'd like to make a point concerning that. The reason I can come to this meeting is because I have, I don't have a job that I need to go to. So when you have a hearing that's 9.30 in the morning, uh, it'll have the working people, you know, they're out there, they're paying their taxes, and, and there is that um, I, the resentment that, that they don't have the input of it because, because people work. You know, all those advisory committee meetings were in the evening. Thank you. But actually, I work out of out of state, even, so, even living here, so hard for people to get to some of those. Anybody else? I'm kind of in agreement with Dave. The fact that I'm not in full agreement with everything that you have in there, but I think it's time to get it done. Yeah, thanks. What was your name, sir? What's that? Paul. Yeah. And that's the, one of the comments I've also heard. If I that not everybody likes everything about that design. Not everybody likes, but <coughs> that just goes to show you that we're all individuals and we all have different likes and dislikes. But my feeling is in this board, we all have to work for the common good. And to redesign that courthouse now, we'll probably, you would scrap everything you got now and start over for another half a million dollars. That's what it costs. And then you have to go through that bidding process again. You got, and you're not going to please everybody. Go back to what Abraham Lincoln said. You can please some of the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. So it's never going to happen. And as far as the vote went, it was over 53% approval. We didn't get the 60% in the last vote. To me, that says a lot. 50, over 50% 50 of the folks in Mitchell County approved us going forward with this courthouse. So that's why we're out here today. We can spend more money and more money and prolong it, but it, at what cost? And, and as far as my feeling, <laughs> we've belabored this project long enough. It's time to move forward. So, so my, so may I ask, because you referred to the advisory meetings, do is it published somewhere where like the particular questions I asked are addressed, such as the functionality of the, the advisory lobby? committee was set up with the architects. They were they had meetings at the conservation when they went through the design process of what do we do? Do we fix the old courthouse? Do we fix the old courthouse, add on to the old courthouse? Do we build new on new courthouse somewhere or what? If it came back, that group overwhelmingly voted or decidedly voted to build new on the present site because it was going to cost way too much money to fix the old courthouse and add an addition. 
and it was going to be millions of dollars. I think it was somewhere in the $9.9 million dollars <coughs> um, a couple of, minimum, a couple of years ago. But concerning the particular questions I asked, is that published someplace where, where you discuss the actual There's a design book itself? Down at the, that you had that kind of went through the whole process at the, on the auditor's office. Okay, that, so, I mean, because I looked online, I was trying to find information, so I don't know where to go. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. For me to better understand this design, that's what I'm asking. I'm looking for, like I said, the reasoning beside the functionality, you know, that's been discussed of the right. very large lobby. I mean, I'm willing to read and look at anything I need to because I want to come along. I just need to understand. I need to understand if it's energy efficient. And I need to understand your considerations as brought up, and this is not by just myself and right. the other person, that the, the amount of transactions you expect to to occur because more and more is going online and younger people are very, very comfortable, especially people that hold jobs. So I'm just looking for the documentation that covers those topics. I don't know that everything is documented in writing, but uh, uh, part of when we started on this project, we looked at doing a one-story, uh, single-story uh, facility. We were told that uh, because of the cost of uh, the rafters and so forth, it was cheaper to go uh, two stories with a basement. And so when we made that decision uh, to go two stories with a basement, we also decided uh, uh, the upper story is the place that uh, the clerk of court and the courtroom should be. Uh, once that decision was made, there was a uh, article in the paper last week explaining that uh, the supervisors had the full say of everything that went on at the courtroom and the courthouse. Uh, I will disagree with that. Uh, Iowa Code 602-1303 subsection B states that the court administrator will make a determination on what is necessary in that with the approval of the uh, chief, just, uh, chief judge of the whatever. Uh, that is what we've done. Uh, we sat here with uh, Judge uh, Drew and the court administrator, and they tried to go through, and uh, this is how big we actually need the district court. This is how big we need uh, the magistrate court. Uh, this is how big we need the clerk's office. This is how much space we need for the uh, resident judge. This is how much space we need for the... Uh, uh, the jury, and we need uh, so much space for the uh, uh, incoming, I, I can't think of the name for, I mean, your other judge, that, uh, your traveling judge or whatever. Uh, you need so much space for um, uh, the court reporter, the bailiff, and so on. The sheriff needs so much space in order to hold the prisoner secure, in order to wait for uh, uh, some of the uh, hearings and so on and so forth. The library has to be so big in that. Uh, do you really want the Board of Supervisors making all of those decisions, or do you want the people that are going to actually have to utilize uh, that facility that know what needs to be done to try to make... I wasn't going to get in that kind of uh, fight with... Uh, nor do I think we had the right. I think, again, it goes back to uh, Section 602, uh, 602 uh, 1303 point uh, subsection B. Uh, that is up to the court administrator and the judge. Uh, once that was decided on what they needed on the second floor, that determined the first floor. Yes, maybe the lobby is a little bit too big, but we can't hardly do an inverse uh, pyramid, <laughs> uh, have a bigger second floor than a first floor. <coughs> So th this is how some of these decisions get to be made. Then there's also these type of decisions where, um, uh, yeah, do we have too many bathrooms? Yes, I think we do. But again, okay, if we have a Board of Supervisor meeting on uh, Tuesday morning and we have 50-some uh, people that quite often will come to one of our meetings, we need a certain number of bathrooms for those 50-some. If you happen to have a jury trial, you might have 70 people uh, for coming for possible jury duty. Well, now 50 and 70 is 120. Uh, we have so many people that are going to be at the treasurer's office, so many people are going to be at the uh, 
auditor's office, you're going to have so many people at the recorder's office on average in that, that might boost that number up that possibly could mm -hmm. be 150 people or whatever that number is. That determines then the size of the hallways, that determines the size of the bathrooms and so on and so forth by code. Uh, we have no choice in some of these matters. I mean, even though we know <laughs> that this thing is possibly overbuilt, the code says, uh, what is the maximum this can happen, this can happen, this can happen, we got to go with it. And so this is uh, some of the dilemma that we had to face. Uh, did it make us all happy? No. Uh, but what do you do? But then Homeland Security is going to be looking at our plans too and at some point in time to make sure you know, they want to put their comment on it. Uh, my biggest worry is it's going to be too small. We've got storage all over this county and out of this county stuff. And you say it can all be put on a flash drive. Flash drive. Okay. So all those old books, we're going to take them to the landfill? Is that what you want to see? Is that what you want to see those big old letter bound books, less handwritten, everything in them? I mean, that's, is that what we're doing? Is that where we're going? I don't want to in my lifetime. But Mark, did you want to I, I'm just commenting kind of both as the county attorney and as a taxpayer. Um, I was on the, the, you know, the committee that looked at the courthouse, and I'm going to be the first to say not everyone that was even on the committee agreed on what there was. I think that ended up with two elevators, correct? And uh, I was not in favor of two elevators. Uh, so some of the cost things that we wanted to reduce, the architect said, well, you know, in this century, you just you know, here, you need two elevators, you have to have two elevators, and here's why, and I, even though I wasn't in agreement with that, that's what happened. Um, hopefully this building lasts 100 years. We're talking $8 million. If my math is right, that's $80,000 a year, approximately. You know, just ignoring the interest factor. Mitchell County has about 10,000 people in it, so it's really costing each person about 8 bucks a year for a new courthouse. And I know a lot of the money eventually will end up coming from TIF, not property taxes. Um, it's possible, you know. So but TIF is just property taxes. What's that? Yeah. TIF is property taxes. Well, it is. It is. I mean, it depends upon Especially where it is. comes from. Right. Yeah. So um, I, I agree with Dave a hundred percent. I'm sure there's things that I've said at meetings that people have heard what I've said, but when they translated to somebody else, it came out a different way. You're always gonna slant things the way you want people to hear them if you're repeating what somebody else said. I'm sure there's been people who have said things at these meetings that I've misunderstood. I think the big thing is, we're to the point now, there's gonna be a new courthouse. I think we, everybody in the county and everybody needs to let bygones be bygones. And even if you don't agree with everything that's been said and everything that's been done, it's time to put those, those differences behind us. The future's in front of us, it's not behind us. We want to move forward with Mitchell County. We want to be a county that's expanding and drawing industry where people get along. There's been way too much negativity in the paper. There's been way too much negativity between the citizens. I think it's time for everybody to put that aside. Even if you don't like some of the things I've done or the board's done, just let's say, okay, let's put that behind us. Let's move forward. Let's, we're going to have a state-of-the-art courthouse that everybody in the county is going to be proud of. Let's, let's all get together and work towards that goal rather than saying, well, remember what Mark Walk did six months ago, or remember what somebody said two years ago. Let's forget about that. So that's kind of my opinion as a citizen and as the county attorney. And I agree with those comments, and I, and I think that's the point we're trying to make, is the more information that people give and get and receive, the easier it is to move forward. We do not, I mean, and the rumors, or addressing concerns, such as, you know, the concern about what if, 
what if uh, counties can cons consolidate? I'm sure that has been a discussion. I would think that we've had that discussion, and, it would, and to help people move forward is to get the information out so that they know what you've talked about, what you've decided, or what how you come to your decisions. And I think that is that is the, re the when the information isn't shared, that is when negativity takes in because the trust is not there, and that's. That, I think we're all in agreement of, of sharing information and moving forward. So can you address that about the consolidation of courthouses? My, I will address that because in my past experience, in my position when I was with the county prior as a CPC administrator, um, there has been a lot of consolidation in the mental health field. The CPCs, the case management directors, um, right now our CPC that took over my position 10 years ago when I left is over 22 counties and the case management director is going to be over eight counties. And what I've seen is, is that it's the administration. That's what the, everyone's looking at, is the cost of administration is so much higher. So what they do when they consolidate is usually it's the administrator. It would be the elected officials, you know, the, the auditor, the treasurer, the recorder would be consolidated, but you would still have to have the clerks. We still have the case managers in our area, we still have the county social worker in our area. The actual lower level direct interaction with the individuals that do the paperwork and stuff will still be in each county. That's the way the mental health field has been, but the administration is what consolidates. So like the clerk of court right now, Karen is in Mason City four days a week and she's in Osage One. We're consolidated with that, but we still have to have the individuals in that office space during the week, but the director per se isn't there. Okay. So are you saying in the future it could be that maybe that there, the the courtroom would not be used if there was a consolidation? The courtroom would be used because we would still have our district judges, I would think. For, here's my understanding. You know, the Iowa Constitution says you have a right to a jury of your peers, and the Iowa Supreme Court has said that means you have the right to a jury trial in the county in which you live. So unless they change the Iowa Constitution or the Iowa Supreme Court changes that, the district, any time there is a trial, it's always, if it arises out of Mitchell County, it's always going to be held in Mitchell County. Unless requested elsewhere. And, and that request has to come from the defendant. Right. It's, it's not me. In certain situations, for instance, Mitchell County was being sued by a plaintiff. And they said, well, it's really not fair for me to have to sue Mitchell County in Mitchell County. I want it moved to another county. But in a, in a criminal case, it's got to be the defendant that makes that motion for a change of venue. Well, just as another note at our Heartland meeting this last week, the question previous meeting came up, what, what, how would the Heartland group, if, say you had two counties that were going to combine, I think this is conversation that's happening in the lower tier of counties, not necessarily here, but that was going to set in, that has to be voted on by the people in both counties. You're going to have to get a majority of the folks that want in both counties to join two counties together. And the way it sounded to me, that's almost a three year process in and of itself, regardless of how it would affect um, somebody in an insurance pool, because that doesn't necessarily mean that pool would cover the new entity. And so, yeah, it gets talked about, but... Uh, what well, other county courthouse could take on another county for all the needs that are, even if you do have stuff on computers and that, you're still not going to have enough space, and having a new courthouse would be a plus, if that would ever happen. And I go to a lot of uh, two meetings a year with ISAC, and uh, nothing's ever said by any of the 99 counties there about consolidation. Um, I see a lot of people here on a daily basis. We share an office, my office, the auditor, with the treasurer. And there's days there are people stand there in line. So if people are doing more stuff in line, it sure isn't being done here in Metro County. And Pat, who's a recorder, she has a lot of people come this year. I don't need to speak for you, but yeah, I have I have a ton of books. We had a vault built just for us here to keep my books safe. And I have maybe half of them here. The other half are either in the annex 
not protected by fire, flood, famine, or whatever, and there's some in the jail, which my understanding is have to be moved, which will probably be moved to another unsecure location. And, I mean, I'm the keeper of those books. They go back to 1854, and they're very important to me. We're, we're working hard to get these things computerized, indexed, but the scanning cost is astronomical. You know, so these books are important. Surveyors use them, genealogists use them. We get a lot of traffic looking at our books. The abstract office is in there all the time. So, yeah. so the North Isle area go to the other counties around asking which county they'd like to consolidate with. <laughs> Would they like to come to Osage for their courthouse business? Ask Boyd County if they'd like to do that. Ask Ward <coughs> County. Ask Howard County. I would make your county if want to go somewhere else. Uh, we're positioning ourselves to be the go-to place. Well, and, and I can just say, coming from Riceville, you know, you do you try to minimize. I, I know for Osage people, it's easy to get to the courthouse. But if you are on the outside edge, you do try to minimize your trips to Osage to the courthouse. And as I said, too, I mean, a lot of younger people are very comfortable with doing their online transactions. And, and but it's hard just, to get a passport just the point online. Out. Pardon me? It's hard to get a passport online. You can't. Well, and, and I understand. I understand. You you there are some so. things you can, but it's, I mean, we do have 10,000 people in this county. It's not like, you know. 10,700. Yes. Around. <laughs> Deb? Um, just a point of clarification. You said some things were being held out of county. I thought I heard you say that. Maybe I misunderstood. Is there storage out of county? Oh, oh right. storage. Storage. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, storage. Yeah, we have probably, I think, O'Brien took two loads, oh, yeah. truck loads back to Mason City. Mm -hmm. And it's stored at the O'Brien moving in storage. What, what kind of items are we not talking? documents? No. Right. This is just like furniture and those kinds of things? Yeah. Okay. Probably bio Shelby. cabinets, shelving, mm -hmm. things Here. like that. Some of that stuff is, we need to have brought, brought back. Well, yeah, all the, probably. Okay. Um, but the annex is full. That semi trailer you see sitting on that vacant lot, that's full. Uh, Same. From the jail? Half the jail. And, we're not moving that stuff out of jail until this courthouse is built. Okay. <laughs> As it sits right now, anyway. Dave? Yeah, we, we don't know if something's going to get consolidated. I'm going to say it's been 20 years ago when they had a meeting. I was at that meeting up in the courtroom at the courthouse where they were going to consolidate. And that got shot down because the people of Iowa did not want to have to consolidate. So we never know that. <clears throat> One question on the courthouse, there's been so much lately about the safe rooms. Is there anywhere in the lower level of the courtroom that can be used as a safe house for tornadoes? Is there, That's the board there's room. A, uh -huh. The boardroom. The boardroom can be used? Okay. Well, that's Basically good. the whole lower level, if I understand it right, mm -hmm. because it's going to be precast concrete floors, mm -hmm. and it's there's no windows in the basement. So, okay. but... It was mentioned that the, the boardroom would be the biggest room that you could close the doors. Well, that's good. Yeah. Did you be able to get any federal money for that? Because their federal money has been given a lot of money out to safe rooms. Yeah, then you can redesign it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fine. The other thing I'd like, the only thing more I want to say is that I think a lot of things, been, good things have been said. I agree with Mark. That I think it's time for the board to thank the people that try to make changes. I think it's time for the people that wanted changes to appreciate what the time and effort the board has put in. We're never going to get everybody to be 100%, but if we're going to do it, let's move on and get the county reunited instead of separated. I agree with you 100%. I do. I thank everybody that served on the selection committee. The, advisory committee you know they, they met all those nights going out to the conservation or what and you know worked with the architects and came up with this you know the board of supervisors were not at those meetings and in my thought I thought I, well whatever comes back I will be on board with and this is what came back and that's I felt that they we were advised to move forward in the courthouse on the present
site. That's what they came up with. That's what the vote was, 27 to something. I still got the picture at home. Uh, well, I think you need to thank the people that you weren't getting along with, too, the fact that they were only doing what they thought was in the best interest of the county. Exactly. They were on that committee also. In the same also. way, they need to thank you people for your efforts. I agree, Dave. I mean, we, like, we all need to move on and move forward. You know, it's our county. You know, and Stan brought it up one time, too. You know, he, he wasn't necessarily in agreement with every design factor and stuff, and neither am I. I, I could have added a few touches of my own, but I'm not an architect and I'm not an engineer. So. Well, if I could have had my druthers, I'd like to kick the can down the road like they had for the last 40 years. <laughs> I mean, we understood this was not going to be an easy, easy right, thing. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, it was past time of kicking the can anymore. Something had to be done. Either had to yeah. save the old court out or get a new one. One or the other, and you know, it was time to move on. So, but, I appreciate uh, I was elected kicking to. I was elected to do what was uh, right, not what was easy. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been easy. <laughs> <laughs> Words right on my mouth. And I'd like to thank the not having a petition because I, in figuring, I figured out it would be an extra five hundred dollars a day in interest if we had to go with the revenue bonds, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel that investors wherever else they might be should benefit from the county not being able being able to get along. And this is going to save us a lot in the long run, and we're going to get a new house. So I'd rather do it this way than have to go with the revenue bonds. The other way to look at that is, you know, at what's the point? Right. You know, it's going to happen and we need to do it the least expensive way. Gloria. My name is Gloria Brinks and I appreciate what you all do. And my attorney was unable to be here today. Um, and as I told you in the previous hour of the meeting, there's one issue that I, I will ask you not to be led around by Judge Drew as what Ralph Smith has done in the Floyd County Courthouse. Because Ralph Smith owns that town and I've had experience um, in the Floyd County Courthouse. And Mr. Walk, um, two years ago you told me to get a new phone and a new GD uh, attorney or vice versa, well I have, and I think you know him. And I appreciate um, everything that you do for our county, no matter if we've had differences or, and this is really the first time I've ever met you face to face, um, I do appreciate what you do for our county. Um, and I think it is time to move on with the courthouse. We need a new courthouse. Thank you. And Stay that's, on. That was the end of it. Yep. We need to go around, so. All right. Anybody else? Hearing nothing, then I would, uh, I see we made a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second by pause, second by walk, close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing portion of this meeting is closed. So now we move on with the resolution. Resolution 9-11-14. Motion by Rock, second by Wolfhanger. To approve resolution 9-11-14 additional action to enter into general obligation to every renewal loan agreement. Any further discussion? Hearing none, walk. Aye. Copelander, aye. Paulus. Aye. Motion is approved. With that, Supervisor Copelander, I think we can drop uh, item 10 on the agenda. Okay. Item 10 on the agenda was Consideration of setting June 10th for public hearing for issuance of the million seven hundred seventy-six thousand two hundred fifty dollars in revenue bonds for the new courthouse. Um, so that's tabled and gone. So anything else for the good of the cause? Hearing 
none. Stand adjourned at 10 more seven. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Gloria. Appreciate that. <laughs> How do you want to proceed with Just cut us a check, Seth. <laughs> well, really, the length of terms. I mean, that's what we need. Just yeah, yeah, we do. Oh. I, yeah, with, why don't you, with the revenue. Slip up and slip up here, Jeff. Yeah. It's really, and we shouldn't have closed it. We should just sort of recess. Are you going to discuss things? Probably, are we? Stan? We're going to discuss 15, 20 years? Yeah. Are between, you 10, really? between 10 and 20. Ten and twenty. Public thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, reopen re 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 this meeting. Yeah. We'll tell where's the reopen the meeting? Oh, but everybody left. They left before they closed it. <laughs> no, they didn't. Well, no, because I just we... watched them. <laughs> they were walking. Well, can we no, have a discussion and approve of it next have, week? You can have discussion. No, no. Mm -hmm. You just tell us what our if options are. All you are, do is give them information, they're fine. It's not. Okay. That's all oh, you And they can ask you questions, I said that's I was fine. A past okay. But if they discuss oh, things among yeah. themselves, okay. then that's not fine. Okay. So you can ask questions, you can give information, you guys can ask questions, but don't discuss anything amongst yourselves okay. saying, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Very, no, that's fine. That's what we want is the information. And so your cold word is, uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> Start discussing what we should. I, that's exactly what I do. Okay. It's not to hurt anybody. It's just like, like people to know what's going on. Right. Well, we've got legally up to 20 years. You currently have $485,000 of local option sales tax revenue bonds, or revenue coming in. You're using two hundred thousand of all her for the jail, which is going to be paid off next year. So two hundred thousand to what I talk about uh, comfortably between two and three hundred and twenty five thousand is the number she gave me the potential for the courthouse. Of the local option sales. Two hundred is currently up to three and a quarter. Is what she said. The way, the way things are doing, and not needing to do any more transfers, that still leaves you one hundred sixty, seventy thousand. So those are the numbers on that. That would be with the jail still being paid for. That's after, yeah, after, jail's the done, after the jail's done. And I, these other numbers right below, so I was just assuming about 300000 that you may want to uh, divert for local option sales tax for the courthouse. The rest below there is the wind TIF excess. In 16, you have 700000 that goes to $1.3 million. That's with the lost. Because I, I calculated it, it's actually more than that, but with the new rollback and potential tax credits, I left a cushion. So here's the maximum amounts per year that we have excesses. If you use these maximums between local option and to win TIF, you can pay this court off off in less than just about less than ten years. Nine, 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 nine. Ten year uh, ten year bonds. What would be the call when they call when they fifty percent? Fifty percent. Okay. So on ten years, five years down the road, then you can pay ahead. Yeah. You would have any money? Where would we have any money? Yeah. Well, say two hundred two hundred million dollars showed up three years from now. Well, no, but the problem the problem that we have is we still have natural gas issues, and so. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, here's yeah. the maximum. Yeah. And well, so... No, I, I really... Uh, and, uh, so I guess it's, you know, we want to... We're looking at June 2nd or 3rd? Third is a Tuesday. 3rd. June 3rd is coming up the loan agreement. Bond agreement. And I need to... 
What structure are you set it in? How, how soon do you need that? Uh, you meet next week. We can meet. Yes. Anytime. Well, it's your regular meeting next week. You'd be 27th. 27th. Uh, why don't we put it on there? You've got the information here. Why don't you, why don't you give me a call? I'll be available by phone. Oh, then I'll